Our scripture today is from Romans chapter 8, verses 37 through 39, and you can follow along in your pew Bibles on page 1758. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So I think most of us have heard um, this passage before. And when I used to read it, I would think, yeah, that's really nice. That's very reassuring. God is always with me. Simple. But I was never truly able to wrap my mind around what those words meant. I never saw how much that passage impacted my life every single day. What I am going to talk about today is something we all do, and something that took over my life these past few years. In fact, I am pretty sure all of us, some more than others, do this every single day of our lives. I am talking about worrying. In fact, I think I would find very few people in this room who aren't worried or anxious about something right now. Maybe we're worried about a family member, a friend, a job, a job interview, a class presentation, homework, a soccer game, a basketball game, a race, health, money, relationships. As people, we are getting busier and busier as the years go on with jobs, activities, relationships, meetings. And I've realized the more we have, the more we have to worry about. And sometimes, I know I'm not just speaking for myself, we are so overwhelmed by the worries and the anxiety that we are physically and mentally crushed. But that's the thing. We aren't crushed by the encounter or the struggle itself, but we are crushed by the worry. Last year, I was in six extremely difficult classes, and as the end of the year approached, the tests and projects began piling up. I began to withdraw from my friends and my family because I was so worried about performing well on everything. I stayed up till 4 a.m. some nights, and in the morning I would not talk to a soul, so overcome with anxiety. Additionally, I was trying to train for track and run my fastest times ever. I thought daily, hourly, possibly every minute about how scared I was to run. In fact, though I had always loved racing, I began to hate it because of the strain it put on me psychologically. I now notice that the worrying before the race was actually much worse than the actual racing. Adding SATs in college searching, all of these worries gave me a psychological meltdown like I have never had before. I stopped talking to my friends, I got in arguments with my family. I never smiled. I began to disrespect myself. Then I began to worry about my entire future, my career, having children, getting married, being a good Christian. Life was no longer exciting. It was scary. This psychological breakdown was not because of the races or because of the tests, or because of the project, the SATs, or the college searching. It was because of the endless worrying and dreaded anticipation. But because of loving adults and friends who helped me in that time of struggle, my mind has turned around, and the way I view things has certainly changed. I will not, and we will not, ever know the future. We won't know if we're going to get that job. We don't know if we're going to lose that loved one. We don't know if we're going to get an A on that test or a medal in that race. We don't know what college we are going to get accepted to. 
or what friends we're going to make there. We don't know how an argument is going to resolve. We don't know what disasters we are going to face. So how can we not worry? How on earth can we not be afraid? And I've finally realized that this is the key point that God needs us to see. We will not know what happens in the future, but we know what will not happen in the future. We will not break. And that's the key word, break. We are unbreakable. And that fact is what has made me strong again. You see, I worried last year and this year that I would not make it through my final exams and projects because the load was so heavy. I actually remember telling my friend Kelly, Kelly, I am going to die. I am not going to make it through this. But here I am, and I made it. I worried last year and this year so much to a harmful point about whether I would make it through the track season, which I was so afraid for. I worried night and day that I would humiliate myself, have terrible races, and I couldn't see that I would ever make it through. But here I am. I ran fine. I made it through. And it wasn't that bad. When my grandpa passed away a few years ago, I was deeply hurt. I was positive that I would be stuck in that sadness at his loss for the rest of my life. But here I am, and I'm okay, because I know right now my grandpa is great. I made it through everything that I spent so long worrying about. And here's the fact, you will make it through the struggle, because you and I are unbreakable in Christ. I want to share with you an analogy of a tree. So we are like trees. We have flimsy branches up top that are pliable. They bend deeply. A few twigs might snap. Maybe even a limb will break off when a storm comes. But the trunk is not going anywhere. It is rooted firmly in the ground, never to become uprooted. Although our twigs bend and break unexpectedly in life, our bond to God is like the trunk in the soil. It will never uproot in any storm. Jesus came and created this deep bondage between us and the Father. It is our job to simply believe in that everlasting bond. No matter what you are or I am going through, we are bound to Christ. Nothing separates us from him, so nothing we go through can make us fall apart. So the fact is, we are unbreakable. We will have to bend sometimes, but we will never break because we are bonded to the Father. Therefore, I've learned that we can live life joyfully and worry-free, even through the most difficult times, and we don't have to fear the future. We can trust that he is going to do great things through us. So when the next challenge comes, know that you are unbreakable and take on that challenge fearlessly with courage and strength in God. And to finish, I wanted to read a poem to you called Unbreakable that has truly inspired me and in how I want to live my life. If by broken you mean hard-pressed, oppressed, struck down, then yes, I am broken. But if by broken you mean defeated, overcome, conquered, then no, I am not broken. I am not broken because I know that perseverance comes from suffering and momentary troubles bring an eternal glory that far outweighs it all. For I carry in this transient body life and life everlasting. So I am hard pressed, but not crushed, oppressed, but not overcome, struck down, but not conquered. Not conquered, rather, I am a conqueror. No, more than a conqueror, I am unconquerable. Not broken, rather, I am unbroken. No, more than unbroken, 
I am unbreakable. So be a conqueror of your challenges. Be unbreakable in Christ. Amen.